Okay. Good morning, third Laguna Hills Mutual. Welcome to the regular open meeting of the third Laguna Hills Mutual Board of Directors, the California Nonprofit Mutual Benefit Corporation. Today is September 15th, 2020 at 9.30 a.m. I'd like to call the meeting to order and we do have a quorum. Uh, Vice President McCary will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, uh, President Parson. Will everybody please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Before we get started this morning, I would ask people if they would to record today, if they can from their TVs, the report of the chair and the treasurer's report. Uh, we have some things we wanna to bring to you that are special today. So you can use this for future reference. Okay, uh, acknowledgement of the media will be at a distance this morning. And do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. A second? Second. Okay, second. any discussion? Then? I'd like to make an amendment, please. Okay. Uh, one page, uh, item number 11A on page 19 of 20. Okay. Solution. If you'll look at the sixth paragraph down, you'll see where it says United Board. Okay. Please change that to Third Laguna Hills Mutual. Okay. And that's it. Thank you. Everybody, make that as a note. Lynn, what was the page again? It's page 19 of 20. Correct. You're right. Okay. Can we consider that as Scrivener's error? You could. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there any other discussion on the agenda? Okay, if not, then we'll consider, consider it under unanimous consent, unless there's any objections. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of August 18, 2020? Regular open I'll, meeting. I make the motion to approve the August 22 meeting minutes. Okay, second. I second it. Okay, any uh, comments? Okay, if not, we'll consider that under unanimous consent. Thank you very much. Now for report of the chair, uh, Grant, uh, I would ask you to go ahead and start, uh, or just a second. Uh, I wanna uh, make a public statement to all of our residents in Third Mutual. Uh, I would like to talk to you today about an issue that is close to my heart, my pocketbook, and to yours also. Quite frankly, the board needs your help. This may be the most significant issue we have dealt with as, a, as board members and manor owners. We, your board, have been working as a board for the past year on an issue that has become more and more complex and costly every day. Our unwieldy CCNRs and the effect they are having on our services, our insurance premiums, our operating reserves, and the cost in staff time and legal fees have been significant. Insurance is the most costly issue of all. This is not news for some of you, as this issue has been percolating for over a decade, but the problem is about to boil over. Next slide, please. We have a problem. <clears throat> Can we go ahead and roll the video, please?
Thank you. Third Laguna Hills Mutual, we do have a major problem. Okay, <laughs> we can kill that. After a year of working among ourselves, researching with staff, engaging with professionals, village leaders, and legal counsel, your board initiated a ballot proposition to provide a solution. We need 66.7% of all voting members to vote yes. To make that possible, we need your help, not just to vote, but to get the word out to every single third mutual member. We all need to vote by mail before Tuesday, November 2nd. Today, we are launching a coordinated effort that includes you. A two thirds vote will provide a clear voters mandate to clean up the mess that is in our current CCNRs. As you know, your current CCNRs are conflicting, convoluted, and costly. Next slide, please. Here are some recent negative effects that have already occurred. As you can see, this problem needs correcting before more delays ensue. There are 59 separate sets of CCNRs causing over 22,000 pages of policies, procedures, rules, and regulations that have amassed as the village was built. Some documents are 50 years old and outdated. The CCNRs are conflicting and are very costly. The most costly of the problems facing us today is a real property insurance coverage. Next slide, please. In order to accomplish this, we must band together and hit the ground running. If you want to participate in the race to election day, we welcome you. We have information, materials, and a plan, so join us now. As you can see, here's a continuation of other things that have been deferred that we've had to deal with this year. Next slide, please. This is a little bit of what you saw in the uh, video that was shown early, but it really helps to bring back the point that these CCNRs need to be updated. It is very costly, as you can see. Next slide, please. The Tracer's report will quantify our current and growing costs. The growing costs have had the effect of deferring, diminishing, and curtailing important services. These effects will continue to escalate exponentially if the ballot proposition is not passed. We'll be getting more into this in the Treasurer's Report by our Treasurer, Robert Muchnick. Next slide, please. Well, we do have a solution. Your board has already reviewed, updated, and consolidated the current CCNRs, but cannot adopt them without passage of the ballot proposition. We need your yes vote. Next slide, please. As you can see here, these are items that are affecting us directly, and everything reaches into your pocketbook. It will affect uh, beginning this coming year uh, in your assessment, what comes to you. Next slide, please. As a start to help get the word out, we have this simple flyer that will be available on the web, on social media, and via email. So you can download it, print it out, and let everyone in Third Mutual know how important the yes vote truly is. The video you watched earlier will also be posted so you can link to and share it. Next slide, please. Well, help us help you sign up to protect Third Mutual and our services. You can use the email no mess vote yes at lagunawoodsvillage.com or you can call or text 949-354-4199.
Let's get let's vote and get out to vote. Together, let's contact each member of Third Mutual starting now. Thank you so much for your attention. Okay, let's proceed on with our meeting today and go to the open forum. Do we have any speakers on the open forum, please? Good morning, uh, President Parsons and his team members of the board. We have absolutely no comments at this time. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. So therefore we would have no response to the open forum. Let's move on to the CEO, COO report, please. Good morning, Mr. Parsons, and uh, good morning to the board of directors and residents out there. Uh, I have a couple of things I wanted to update uh, the board on. The, the first was uh, with regards, regards to COVID-19 and where we stand with, in Orange County relative to the state's uh, new program that they went to a, col a color-coded um, tier system um, about a month ago and Orange County now is in the second tier, uh, which is the red tier. If you go on their website, um, go on the COVID-19 dashboard website, um, that is the category that is still considered that um, COVID-19 is a substantial risk in Orange County, um, but it is better than the um, purple category that they were in previously, which is considered widespread. Um, and really what that means is there is a um, percentage of um, uh, somewhere between four and seven daily cases, new cases per 100,000 population. And right now, Orange County is at averaging um, at 5.2. Um, these categories are um, one in which once you go into a new category, which we just moved into the red category last week, um, Orange County um, will be required to stay in that category for three weeks. Um, before they could move down into the moderate uh, level, which is the next level. They also would be required to drop the um, per number from 5.2 down below um, 3.9 in order to capture that new category. So there's still a lot of work to do. And um, of course, we appreciate everything that uh, residents in the village is doing because our numbers are, are fantastic relative to the cooperation of our residents in the village and, and their activity. We are still at only 49 cases for the whole community of Laguna Woods, which we are obviously a, a very substantial part of. Um, but within the community of Laguna Woods, we're still at 49 cases, um, unfortunately, at, but at, at a good number, we are still at five um, deaths that have occurred in this time period since they've been recording, um, but that has stayed um, constant for the last couple of weeks, so that is also good news. I also wanted to mention that within the numbers, the um, two critical areas are the hospitalization and ICU numbers. Uh, right now, as of the last couple of days, we're hovering at about 195 beds. Uh, yesterday's um, number was 193 um, people in, in the hospital because of COVID-19 and there are 56 individuals that are in the ICU. These are substantial um, um, lower numbers than what we saw back in July and in June. So that's good news. It's trending in the right direction for Orange County. Um, so that is um, some positive news on COVID-19. We continue to relative to here at the village, um, watch these numbers diligently. Um, we have our policy in place, which has helped keep our numbers down in my opinion. We are also, um, with regards to COVID-19 and the village, we are opening up um, and expanding some of our recreation um, facilities um, with regards to tennis and pickleball and um, expanding the hours on that. Uh, I'm not sure if Siobhan's gonna have a little additional information, but uh, on the times and I'll let her um, talk about that a little bit, but, but we're moving in that direction. The other thing that we are also working on uh, that Siobhan and, and Brian and I met with um, is to, uh, get more outdoor activities, uh, classes uh, that we'll be programming out outside so that we can have more ac outside activities um, for our residents during this time where we don't open up the community centers because of safety. Um, last but not least, I wanted to, um, on your agenda today is obviously um, a big uh, item in 11 um, B and C, which is uh, your budget. 
and I want to thank the board for their um, working with staff and, and appreciate all the efforts by the board members to give us good feedback when we went through version one, version two, and now on to this version. And I also want to thank um, all the staff that were involved with putting their budgets together and, and appreciate that. So um, with that, I'll turn it back to, uh, I'll turn it over to Siobhan because I know she has a few updates. Thank you, Jeff. Honorable President, members of the board, I have a few announcements for you this morning, please. First off is the annual asphalt paving project is underway in our community. Third locations include cul-de-sacs 216 and 306. Also, Ray Del Sol and Vista Del Mundo. At the end of July, 30-day notice letters were mailed to residents in the specified areas. The contractor is also posting notices two weeks and 48 hours in advance of the start of pavement work. As Mr. Parker mentioned, we have recently expanded the hours for our racket sports. Tennis, paddle, tennis, and pickleball is now available from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily. And we've also expanded the hours of lawn bowling to last until dusk. The online sports reservation system launched about two weeks ago. The system is called the court system, and it can be used for swimming, paddle tennis, tennis, pickleball, reservations. And there are detailed instructions on the village website under the news tab if you need guidance on how to use the app and make your reservations. As a reminder, bulky item trash collection is available on the third Saturday of each month. The next collection date is this Saturday, Saturday, September 19th. If you're interested in participating, please notify resident services prior to setting out your bulky items. And that telephone number is 949-597-4600. The bulky items must be set out either the night prior to collection or no later than 7 a.m. on collection day. And as a reminder, the in-home bulky item collection program is on hiatus during the pandemic. The 2020 census is ongoing. The Census Bureau has started in-person follow-up visits to those residents who have not responded to the 2020 census. The census takers have completed training on social distancing and safety protocols. They are required to wear face masks when conducting follow-up visits and have appropriate identification. Residents can still complete the census. They can do that online at 2020census.gov by telephone at 844-330-2020, or by completing and mailing back the questionnaire they should have received in the springtime. Census help is available from the City of Laguna Woods. Uh, you can reach City Hall by emailing cityhall at cityoflagunawoods.org, or by calling City Hall at 949-639-0500. Again, City Hall can help with any questions about the census. And as we move towards the November 3rd national election, the City of Laguna Woods is finalizing its agreements with the county to serve as a vote center and to feature a ballot drop-off box. The ballot drop-off box is expected to open on October 5th, and the vote center is expected to be open from October 30th through November 3rd. Additional information will be available soon. And that concludes my updates this morning. Thank you very much. Well, just wanted to add to this. So we appreciate uh, the staff, uh, especially uh, Jeff Parker, Siobhan and Eileen and other key staff members that have brought recommendations to us as we have developed our business plan. It's extremely helpful and saved a lot of time. So thank you folks very much. Uh, one item that I noticed uh, around the neighborhoods recently, uh, could you go over how we uh, handle the disposal of commodes? Uh, when they need to be replaced, do they need to go beside dumpsters? Do they need to have a call? Uh, does anybody have a method that we can use for pickup? President Parsons, let me get you the specific directions and I'll report back at the end of the meeting during the comments section. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, anybody have any questions for staff at this point? Okay, 
Moving on to item number 10, consent calendar. Do I hear a motion to accept the consent calendar? Okay, uh, Vice President McCary makes a motion. Is there a second? Okay, Director Jarrett. Okay, any comments on that? If not, we'll consider that as um, unanimous consent. Okay, on to item 11. First item, I'll turn it over to Director Jarrett. Uh, good morning, President. Uh, this is to approve a, a resolution for guidelines for financial qualification income requirement for guarantors. Uh, this resolution uh, has now uh, passed its 28-day notification review and it's ready for a motion to approve. So do I hear a motion? Director Muchnick mo moves. Is there a second? Okay, Director McCary. Okay, discussion. Anybody, anyone have any comments they want to bring forward on this? Okay, yeah, unless there's any objection, we'll consider this under unanimous consent. Okay, uh, for items uh, B and C, I'd like to turn this over to our treasurer, uh, Director Muchnick. Thank you, uh, Director Parsons, appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to get a, a motion to approve the business plan for 2021. And then once we have that motion on the floor, I'll share some slides with everyone uh, to walk people through what's actually in the business plan. So can I get a motion, please? I'll okay. make the motion. Okay. Second. Okay. Lynn Jarrett, Steve Parsons makes the motion. Lynn Jarrett seconds. Okay, Grant, if we could please have the first slide, I would appreciate it. One moment, please. first slide that you're going to see once it's up on the screen is the uh, business plan for 2021. Okay, that's it. And what it shows you is a progression from 2017 to 2021, the basic uh, assessment for third mutual. Uh, you'll see in the next slide what the assessment is with what we have to also give to GRF. So at this point, if you go back to the first slide, please. I apologize, that's my mistake. Thank you, Fran. Uh, the current assessment for this year has been $446.62. The assessment for next year will be $466.62, showing an increase of $20 per manner per month for our increased assessment. Uh, you need to understand, as President Parsons pointed out so nicely in his uh, presentation regarding the CCNRs and the bylaws, that the biggest increase we're facing is in insurance. And when we started the business plan process this year, iteration number one of our business plan, we had a $44 per manner per month increase, and that was because of insurance. Our insurance is going up dramatically. I'll talk more about that in the finance report, but that's what the major driving factor behind the per manner per month increase this year. And with the fine work of Betty Parker and her staff and other people at VMS, we were able to get that assessment down to $20 per manner per month. And as you see in the next couple of slides, you'll see where some of that information and some of that uh, increase comes from. So Grant, if you go to the next slide. Okay, this shows the per manner per month increase uh, assessments from 2017 through what's proposed for 2021 and will be adopted as of today. So the per manner per month this year will be $672.22. Okay, the next slide, Grant, please. All righty, this shows you where the actual breakdown is for us in terms of our increased expenses. And you'll see that the total expense, $11.63 increase, for 2021 uh, and our reserve contributions are increasing by $9.52. So 
So we wind up with a total basic assessment of increase of $20 per manor per month uh, for a total of $672.22. All right. And the last slide related to this has to do with the surcharges specific to uh, those folks who are living in garden villas and uh, have common laundry facilities as well as elevators. Okay. Uh, their assessment actually is going down by $1.28 per manor per month. It'll be for next year $21.38 per manor per month. And that gives you just a basic overview of the uh, charges for assessment for 2021. Okay. Any discussion by members of the board? Hearing none, uh, I'd ask for a vote on the motion to approve our business plan for 2021. We have the motion on the floor. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying, raising their hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Uh, like we need Reza's uh, input, long distance here. Thank yes. you, Reza. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, looks like it's unanimous consent. So we'll move on then. Thank you to the uh, third reserve fund planning, okay? In terms of the third reserve fund, you saw on the last slide that we had, there was going, not the last slide, the second to last slide that we had, there was going to be a $9.52 increase per manner per month for our reserve fund to keep us whole in that process and reach our goal uh, down the road in terms of what we want to have in reserves to protect third mutual. So can I get a motion to approve the reserve funding plan, please? I see any moves. Can I get a second? I see Ralph's hand up for a second. Thank you. All right. Uh, can I get a uh, raise of hands to approve the motion to have our third fund, third reserve funding plan? Everybody raise yes. their hand in favor. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, Raza, are you in favor? I said yes. I think. Okay. Thank you. Then we'll consider that by unanimous consent. And we'll move on. Turn it back over to you, Mr. President. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, our CFO, Betty Parker, is in here with us. Betty, do you want to make any comments? It's probably the fastest we've gone through this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that might seem fast for anybody watching for the first time. So I'll just remind the, the viewing audience that the board has spent uh, much of the year reviewing this budget and um, going through a very tedious process of analyzing and meeting and um, reviewing proposals and providing feedback for staff. And so I just want to thank everybody um, for the directions they've given. Uh, it's been a very productive and helpful format and the insurance um, is still ongoing. We're going to um, find a better time to renew our insurance next year so that it's not um, happening at the same time we're approving budgets and at the same time that um, our state is having wildfires, right? It, it's just uh, um, not a good time of year as shown this year and last year. So we'll look for a new renewal date. But um, just want to thank the board. Um, this has been months and months of work, and we appreciate all of your efforts. Yeah, I might remind the audience that uh, uh, at the same time this is going on, we were going through updating our bylaws and CCNRs. And uh, we had some other projects we were working on at the same time. So between staff and board, we're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours that was put in to make everything come forward to this point. So Betty was involved in a lot of this. Of course, uh, Jeff and Siobhan and Eileen were also. And uh, we thank our VMS uh, uh, advisors that we appointed to the VMS board. They came in on this too, as well as some other key people in the community. So thanks so much to everybody for your hard work to this point. We have a little bit more to do to get through the uh, 3rd of November, but working together, we can do that. And once again, thanks to everyone. Okay, let's go into new business item 12. And I'll turn uh, item 12A over to Director Jarrett. Um, excuse me. 
with a motion. This is for, I'm reading this for a motion to approve the 2021 collection and lien enforce, enforcement policy. And uh, we must postpone for 28 days for member review and comment to comply with Civil Code 4360. Do I hear a motion to approve this? I'll move to approve. Second. Okay, Steve first and raise that second. So that'll now go on 28 day review, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. The next item is, let me get my little sheet sheet out here. Well, we're moving fast this morning. This, uh, this uh, item 12B is for a motion to change the exterior paint and fire to paint programs for a 10 year cycle to a 15 year cycle. And I'm going to uh, entertain a motion to uh, approve this. Director Muchnick has his hand up. To approve, to move, to approve. What, Second. No, discussion? Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, Robert, if you could discuss it, Robert. Thank right. you. Director Jarrett, if I could take yeah. a moment to acquaint the membership with uh, the thought process behind this. Uh, first of all, I want to send out a very special thank you to Ernesto Munez, uh, who is a staff member for VMS, director of the maintenance and construction area. He was able to meet with the paint supplier and negotiate that uh, the 10 year warranty that we have on our paint be extended to a 15 year warranty at no additional cost to the mutual. This is results in the potential tremendous savings. We anticipate that by going from a 10 year to a 15 year cycle, we will save between labor and the materials approximately $700,000 per year with no change in the quality of the paint. The technology that has advanced in terms of the quality of the paint uh, makes it so that there is no reason to paint every 10 years. We're going to now paint every 15 years. And along with that, I want to also share that there were, uh, when we went to the 10-year pa paint cycle, there were 99 buildings in Third Mutual that had been passed over uh, and uh, had not been painted. And we will now put them at the head of the list and paint them first beginning in 2021. And that's it. Okay, great. And that'll also go on 28-day uh, notification. Yeah. Correct. Okay. <laughs> correct. Is there any other new business uh, that I've missed? Okay, going forward to committee reports, we'll turn it to uh, the financial report and Director Muchnick. Thank you, President Parsons. Uh, Grant, we hopefully have some slides for this. Yep, I'll put them up. Thank you, sir. All right, folks, this is my second report to you as your treasurer. Uh, this month, I'd like to present some of our financial data a little differently than you're used to seeing. In fact, it's different from the slides. For those of you who have copies of the agenda packet, uh, these slides that will be presented today are different from what you have in your packet. And the reason that they're different is I've decided that I wanted to try to provide you with a little bit different kinds of information than what you've seen on a month-to-month -month basis. I've compared where we are as of the end of July and where we were at the end of June. Uh, I'm doing this so that you have a perspective on how things are changing from month to month. Uh, if we could go to the first slide. Please keep in mind that all of the financial data that you are seeing today is from the 31st of July. Given that it's already September 15th, much of what you are seeing has already changed but at least you can get a sense of trends that Third Mutual is experiencing. The slide that you have before you now provides you with a view of income as of the 30th of June and the 31st of July. In re the red bars are where we were at the end of June. The green bars represent where we are at the end of July 31st. 
uh, from July, June 30th to July 31st, the Third Mutual saw an additional assessment revenue in the amount of $2,763,000. Uh, the table shows that Third went from $16,583,000 at the end of June to one month later, the revenue was at $19,345,000. So this gives you a perspective of uh, the differences. All right. Uh, in terms of non-assessment revenue, there was an additional $234,000 brought in since the end of June. This created a total revenue of $21 million by the end of July, meaning that an additional revenue of $2,997,000 since the end of June. Expenses also increased during this time period by an additional $3,000,000 $198,000, leaving Third Mutual with a net revenue of $3,527,000, which is $201,000 less in net revenue for the past 31 days. We anticipate the net revenue will continue to decline over the coming months since, uh, since we have now brought back almost all the individuals who are on furlough and have restarted such projects as the Prior to Paint the paint project, waistline remediation, et cetera. Next slide, please. This slide presents data for the operating fund only for both the 30th of June and the 31st of July. Again, uh, the June data is in red and the July data is in green. Assessment revenue increased over this 31 day period by, by $1,686,000. Non-assessment revenue increased by $114,000 for total revenue increase for the last 31 days of $1,800,000. During the same period, third expenses increased by $1,846,000. This reduced the surplus $46,000 so that we have at the end of July uh, period $584,000 in surplus. As indicated earlier, we anticipate expenses to increase in part because of the return of furloughed staff and the restart of projects. This also means that outside services, which were either curtailed or reduced, will see an uptick over the next few months, which will mean increased expenses. Next slide, please. This slide compares our revenues and expenses to what was actually budgeted. As can be seen from the slide, actual and budgeted assessment of revenue was as one would expect, the same. In terms of non-assessment revenue, Third Mutual has had more revenue for the month of July than we had anticipated or budgeted. This is a good thing for us. Actual non-assessment revenue was $496,000 over what was anticipated when the budget was originally created last year. Expenses for the month of July were less than budgeted, leaving a variance of actual revenue minus expenses versus what was budgeted of a plus $5,315,000. Again, do not think that this positive variance is one that Third Mutual can maintain. Now that we're back at full force in terms of projects, personnel, and outside services, this variance will decline as the year progresses. Slide five, please. This slide provides you with a picture of select budget items and the current variance associated with each. You'll also have the opportunity to see how each of these variances compares to the variance for each category at the end of June. The green bars represent the variances at the end of June. The gold bars represent the dollar amount of variance for each category at the end of July. As you can see, looking at the gold bars only, third has a favorable variance for each of the categories from outside services down to utilities and telephone for the period ending July 31st. The last two categories, which I'm sure you might have some difficulty reading, and I apologize because I, I created these slides myself, not, not the staff. So I take full responsibility for these slides. Uh, let me help you understand the last two categories, insurance and fees and charges. Both of these have unfavorable variants. In the case of insurance, the unfavorable variance is a result of higher than expected premiums to the tune of 308 thousand dollars. I'm sorry to say that this variance will become even more unfavorable as the rest of 220 progresses. As members of Third Mutual, you also need to understand that through no control of your board of directors, insurance will continue to be a very serious problem. 
budget-wise for the next year and for the foreseeable future. The major insurance carriers, some of which have been our carriers for the last 20 years, refused to write insurance for the next year unless the village obtained an updated evaluation of the property. The latest evaluation of the whole village is almost five times what it was last year, showing our out of date, how out of date our previous evaluation was. The increased evaluation coupled with concerns insurance companies have with all the wildfires in California and our proximity to the wildlife area outside of our village that has the potential to cause problems adds on top of the cost of the increase based on the new evaluation and approximately 20% cost of increase in the premium for next year. So all I can tell you is, hold on to your hats, it's going to be a very bumpy ride in terms of insurance. On the positive side, I can tell you that your board is working very, very hard to address all angles to control the cost of insurance. Stay tuned, there's much more information to be shared with members over the next few weeks about possible ways to help address this problem and some of the others we face as members of third. The second unfavorable variance is $160,000 for fees and charges. This is an unfavorable balance because determination hearings must be held before members can be billed for their share of the moisture intrusion costs. We do anticipate that once those determination hearings are held, that that variance will change and that uh, will decrease. Plot side six, please. All right, this slide depicts two pie charts. The one on the left is for June 30th, while the one on the right is for the total non-assessment revenue for the period ending July 31st. Third had additional total non-assessment revenue income of $234,000, $234,940 month over month. Most of the different categories of the two pie charts stayed fairly similar in terms of the percent of revenue they generated. All right. Give you a second to be able to look at that chart. As you can see, income investment mm -hmm. in June represented 8% of the uh, non assessment revenue, 17% as of the end of July. So you can see that those things remain fairly similar in terms of non assessment revenue. Okay, uh, slide number seven, please. This slide also depicts two pie charts for comparison purposes. Month over month, Third had additional expenses of $3,198,234. In terms of the different categories, outside services had the greatest increase in expenses. You can see that outside services in June, end of June, represented 22% of our total expenses, while in, at the end of July, it represented 25%. So that was one of the areas where you had the highest uh, percent of change, okay? Uh, Keep in mind that third has outside contractors who provide services like slope maintenance, tree trimming, roof pair, et cetera, which contribute to these increased costs and will continue to contribute to those costs over the rest of this year. Next slide, Grant, please. If you look at the lower right-hand corner of this slide, uh, that is July 31st, Third Mutual had almost $32 million for reserves and contingencies. That includes $91,000 in the Garden Villa Fund, over $4 million in the Unappropriated Expenditures Fund, $9 million in the Disaster Fund, and $18.5 million in the Replacement Fund. Year to date, Third had $8.5 million in contributions and interest added to these funds, while we had $5.5 million in expenditures for a net increase to, to date, year to date, of just over $3 million. Okay, slide, next slide, number nine. This shows you our fund balances uh, from 2016 to the present, uh, which have averaged about $28 million. Please note that third has been committed to supporting the goals of the reserve requirements, while at the same time trying to balance the need for unexpected events. One such unexpected event that will take its toll on these funds is something that I've mentioned and that Steve, uh, your president has mentioned, numerous times, and that's the anticipated cost of insurance for the next year. I don't want to be the dead horse, so to speak, but I can't emphasize enough the need of, for concern about the cost of insurance for third. 
While your board is taking whatever steps are both legally and financially possible to address this issue, there is only so much we can do. Again, you will be hearing more about how you can help to address this issue in the coming weeks. And the last slide, Grant, please. This slide provides you with a picture of the resale situation for third for the past five years, okay? Uh, the good news is that we saw a substantial increase in the number of sales for the month of July over the previous three months. Also this year, we've seen a slight increase in the average sales price of manors over last year. However, total sales for this year still lag considerably behind this of the past two years to date. We are down 54 resales for the same time period last year and 11 more from the year before. Hopefully, we will continue to see an upswing in resales for the rest of this year. That concludes my report. Next meeting of the Finance Committee is October 6th at 1.30 in the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, just to add to that, our uh, lease percentage right now stands at 27.2% as of the end of last month. So that's looking good for there. Okay, on to... Uh, the report, Architectural Control Standards Committee. Uh, we met on July 27th, and our next meeting will be September 28th, uh, 2020 at 9.30 a.m., and it will be a virtual meeting. Uh, on to the report of Communications Committee, Director McCary. Thank you, President Parson. The Communications Committee has not met this year. However, we do have a meeting scheduled for October 14th, uh, 2020 at 1.30 p.m., and that meeting will be virtual. Thank you. Okay. And uh, Annie, if you would, how would people get uh, comments to you or suggestions before that meeting? They can um, either email me or send the comments directly to um, the uh, general manager's office, and they will get those uh, emails to me, either Cheryl, Cheryl Silver or Becky Jackson. Okay. Thank you very much. On to the report of Maintenance Construction Committee, Director Muchnick. Okay, thank you, uh, President Parsons, and I promise this report won't be anywhere near as long as the Treasurer's report. The committee met on September 9th and had a lively discussion about a number of topics. Ernesto Munez, who was the Director of Maintenance Construction, gave a number of updates regarding personal, personnel and projects. Ernesto was pleased to report that Third is now going full tilt on all programs such as paving, concrete work, and our epoxy lining program. In terms of the dry rot program, 14 buildings have been completed out of the original 81 that was scheduled for 2020. The shutdown because of the virus delayed the completion of the dry rot program for many of the buildings. However, since we are now up and running, we will complete as many of these buildings as possible in the rem months remaining for 2020. In terms of other projects, please remember that the third board in May of this year put a number of programs on hiatus for 2020 and reduced a number of others. The furlough of workers as a result of the virus meant that we would not be able to complete all the projects in a timely manner. Also, with the looming insurance costs on the horizon for the remainder of this year and certainly next year, the third board was looking for a way to be able to redirect funds without impacting the overall integrity, look, and use of third property. To refresh your memory, back in May, third board uh, put these following programs either on hiatus or reduced them. We reduced, uh, we stopped the building addresses program. That was $30,000. We reduced the parapet and stucco wall repair project by $180,000. We uh, reduced the energy projects by $10,000. Golf cart parking and striping was reduced $50,000. Epoxy waistline remediation, $250,000. Elevator replacement was put on hold for this year. That saved us $255,000. Building structures were reduced by $150,000. The prior to paint, $600,000. And the exterior paint, $750,000. Therefore, we put aside $2,275,000. Part of that is going to be used uh, to help pay some of the difference in insurance that the uh, third mutual is gonna pick up instead of passing that on to the members as a monthly assessment. And the, as you know from uh, earlier in today's meeting, the MNC committee moved to amend the resolution to extend the exterior paint and prior to paint program cycle to 15 years, and that's on 28 day notice. And I already discussed with you uh, 
that the 99 buildings that were passed over in 2006, when uh, we went to a 10-year cycle, will now be uh, put at the front of the list. Uh, and that's all I really have to say at this point. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next meeting is scheduled for November 2nd at 1.30. Okay. Uh, to the Parking and Golf Court Task Force, uh, we haven't had a meeting. Uh, there's, uh, because of the ballot proposition that's come forward, it's been consuming an inordinate amount of time. So uh, I'm putting on hold everything there until the beginning of 2021. Topics are already coming in that we need to work on. Uh, so stand by for news on that. Uh, Garden Villa Rec Room Subcommittee, Director Jarrett, please. Yes, thank you, President Parsons. Uh, the subcommittee last met in February. The rec rooms were closed due to the pandemic and all repair work was stopped when the staff went on furlough. Now they're back to work full time making all the necessary repairs. So we're going to have our next meeting on October the 5th at 1.30, at which time we'll get an update on the work and see where we are on the budget. In the meantime, rec rooms like clubhouses are closed until further notice. Okay. Would you like to continue on with your landscape committee report? Okay, I'll do that. Landscape, it's been a prolific summer with all the trees and the plants in the village growing so much faster and landscaping can keep up with it all but they're certainly giving it a good try with the current stat and the budget that they have. At our last meeting, Kurt Riemann, the landscape director, explained the edging methodology, which has caused an uproar lately. Grant, can I have the first slide, please? Yes, one moment. I'll take the next one. Next slide, please. There we go. Okay, Mr. Weeman, our landscape director, explained the edging methodology, which has caused an uproar lately in our community because people don't understand it. So we're gonna to try to show and explain it a little bit today. Uh, Mr. Mr. Wayman and his crews also began in this new technology of edging around the trees and the irrigation boxes to help cut down the trimming that is done by weed whacking, which is time consuming. You can see some irrigation boxes here. For some time now, the crews are working their way around third to spray a non-toxic chemical around the trees, shrubs, and boxes. As you can see in this, you have an aspect uh, the before spray, the before, oh wait, you have the before spray over here at the top. You see on the top uh, left hand box, very, um, they, they sprayed and uh, they made a wide swath, particularly on this box. Uh, some of the uh, crew members, uh, when they were new to this, having to spray these chemicals and make it like an art piece. Um, they uh, did a little, they did a little wider than they should have, but then they learned and then they cut back and they're making them smaller now. And then after about seven or 14 days, uh, that yellow grass dies. And when it dies, they go in there and they trim it back. And this eventually leaves a clean edge with a lot fewer labor hours involved. So the, the crews are getting better. And if you can believe this, we have 52 miles of edging that needs to be done here. Next slide, please. Okay, we have another small landscape uh, modernization project going on. Well, actually, it's finished now. So uh, you know how we're trying to get rid of the turf, reduce the high, uh, the high cost of maintenance of the grass and the water. And over here on the left in slide one, you can see where they started with uh, they started with the turf, and then they killed it off and 
in, in the side tube. You can see where they uh, let the grass die off. They cut it way down, let it die off. And in sides three and four, you can see where they planted it. And it's really, really very nice looking. This area is in cul-de-sac 343 over there off of the Bahia Blanca. So um, I want to tell you that, you know, we want to do more of those. We really actually want to do more of these projects. But in the meantime, we're trying to we're trying to identify some areas in the village where we can do some small ones at a low cost. <clears throat> in the meantime, the good news for some of you who would like to turn your own grass into drought tolerant uh, drought tolerant lawns, you can do that. And some people can get rebates at the dinner where you live, especially in gate nine, ten, and eleven are areas where there. Uh, are great places to uh, reduce the turf and go with drought tolerance uh, plants. Uh, actually, they turn out very beautiful, and now people are starting to talk more about them. So if you're interested, uh, what you need to do is you need to fill out a landscape form and um, send it in, and uh, we're going to take a look at it <clears throat> in a landscape committee. Hot off the press, one of the biggest complaints we have lately, for whatever reason, is the, is the uh, mice, and mice population is increasing, especially in gate 11. They've been having a marked increase in the rodent population over there, mice is in particular. But we, like the rest of the world, are grappling with this problem. Mr. Weeman's staff has been testing a new product from rat and mice control. He stated, that the project is very expensive, the product is very expensive, and therefore we're only doing a pilot project right now to see how it works. The product is being used at 11 buildings, plus the garden centers, RD lots, and equestrian center. It's just testing, we're just testing right now. The product requires 60 to 90 days to become effective as it needs to work through several gestation periods to have an effect on the birth rates. Rats are typically Suspicious characters, creatures, and it takes them a while to warm up to a new product, just like a cat. He also stated that the first time through, they did not take any of the product, but they are now having some effective, effectiveness in them taking the bait. So there are still some areas that are not, are, some of those boxes are totally untouched. So it's going to take a while. Uh, <clears throat> this product is new to the market and virtually untested in the field the with an operation the size of ours. It performed well in lab studies, but we all know that that always does is translate to the field. We're still working with the manufacturer to get the most out of the product, and their manufacturer is flying out this week to see Mr. Weeman and discuss this product. Even if it doesn't turn out to be an effective product with the size of our property, it will take it will take some time to have an effect on all of the rats. I think even if it does turn out to be an effective product, it will take time. So let's make sure that we realize that. On another note, Mr. Weeman reorganized the landscape department recently, and that is working very well with the new managers being enthusiastic and full of ideas. Our next landscape meeting will be held on October 1 at 9.30 virtually. Thank you. Thank you very much. On to the report of the Water Subcommittee. Director Karimi, have we heard anything about rate increases? Uh, the rate increases are coming, and uh, in the last uh, Water Board meeting uh, that was brought up, uh, uh, the Director Jared was there. She had some more information on that. But in general about the water, we received the water report, and uh, we are having issue still with the residents that going over to the tier four and uh, uh director jared visited one of the areas that we have problem and i visited that yesterday also and we do have a problem with the residents that going overboard with a uh, number of plants that they have and uh, really they have a uh, balcony that you know you can have only like five six pots but they have like 20 30 and there is no way to walk there 
There are twofold problem with that. One is the water usage. The other one is the water damage at the same time. So please, please remember these things. This is our community. We're going to take care of it ourselves. I mean, it, uh, having too many of those plants and watering cause a lot of problem, a structural problem and water usage problem. Uh, in the water committee, we're going to, you know, decide to see how we're going to be really, you know, we're trying to do the education, but there are, you know, community need to support what we trying to do. I mean, we cannot do it by ourselves. This is takes everybody to pitch in, make sure everyone's conserved, make sure everyone doesn't go overboard. I know that a lot of people love a lot of plants, but, you know, at the same time, we have to really balance between what we want and what we can afford. So please, please remember those things when you have too many plants in a balcony that might, you know, have that water damage that causes the problem for the maintenance and for or water usage. Um, you know, I'm, I'm asking the community to support us to help the community to conserve water and also to stop damages to the structures at the same time. So uh, in the next water committee, it is scheduled for October 14, is a virtual, and uh, you know, uh, we're gonna discuss uh, how we're gonna do more educational or whatever we can do to bring the members to full understanding of the issue that we're facing. We are living in a semi-arid you know, environment. Water is precious and it's getting more precious. As you see all of the fire around is because lack of water, there is no rain. So please, please remember all of that and help us to help the community. That's my input for now. Sorry okay. for the long one. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Director Jarrett, did you want to bring forward any notes from the El Toro Water District meeting? Well, uh, I won't uh, go into a lot of things that I <clears throat> was going to today because Reza did a good job with what he said already. But I want to mention that after all said and done, our water bill is going to increase 2% this year. So if you take 2% on top of two, over $2.5 million, that's a lot of money, but it actually trans out to one, translates to one dollar per month. That doesn't seem too bad for now, but watch out for the future. Water is expensive, expensive, and we we have to conserve, as Reza said. Thank you. Okay. Alrighty, on to the report of the Resident Policy and Compliance Committee, uh, Director Engdahl. Yeah, it's sort of turn on here, turn my mic on. Uh, thank you, uh, Director Parsons. Uh, this committee met on July 29th and sent a res resolution for guarantor financial requirements to the board for approval. And we also sent some parking rules along with a number of details of issues to the golf cart and parking task force for further discussion in that committee. Uh, the most important item on the table at the present time is a continuation of discussion on the barbecue rules. Uh, we want to be careful to include all of the safety requirements. And uh, we also uh, continue a discussion on meeting rules, guest uh, limits, and qualification for lease authorization permits. Uh, our next meeting is scheduled on September 22 at 9.30. And uh, that's all we have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, before we go into GRF highlights, uh, I had a request if uh, Jeffrey Siobhan could address air quality. Have we heard anything about that? If you could just touch on that right now for a minute. I could. Um, to uh, the chair and the board and the residents out there, uh, the current status for um, our area here is that we are in a unhealthy for sensitive groups uh, designation by AQMD which is the Air Quality Management District. And what that means is basically the, uh, the following groups should pro, um, 
should limit any prolonged or heavy outdoor um, activity or, or exertion. People with heart disease, pregnant women, children, and older adults, um, people with lung disease, and such as any individual with asthma or uh, that type of um, um, ailment. So um, we are no longer in the category where the, it was um, super unhealthy, where they put out the warning. That ended basically Sunday night um, because of the somewhat of the um, shift in the breeze of the um, airflow, but it's still considered uh, unhealthy uh, in Orange County coastal areas that, that we live in right now. Yeah. Okay, any questions about that from anyone? Okay, let's go on to uh, GRF committee highlights and uh, CAC with Director McCary. Uh, thank you, President Parson. That committee did meet September 10th. I was not able to attend because of another meeting conflict, so Director Bada attended that meeting, so I've asked him if he would give the report. Um, okay, one moment. I was kind of... Uh... <laughs> let's, let's see. Uh, hi. Um, this, this meeting was on September 10th. Um, we had a number of items discussed, uh, not many conclusions. Uh, one of the big items that we spent a lot of time on was uh, the outdoor, uh, outdoor gym. Uh, it was, there was a mixed uh, feeling from everybody. Some were for, some were against, and we're gonna revisit this in the next few, uh, in the next meeting. Um, uh, You're coming in a little broken. Uh, the, the, that, I was not ready for this, uh, however, uh, that was one of the main things that we did. And the next meeting is on Uh, I it's October 8th. October 14, 2020. Oh, okay. Yeah. October 14th. Okay, do you also want to report on the Equestrian Center Ad Hoc Committee? Sure. Can you hear me clearly or is are you having issues with that? Now I can. Yeah, I've kept my, my camera off for that purpose. Um, okay, so uh, there were at least eight or 10 items discussed at that time, but I'm gonna discuss only, I mention only the three main ones. Uh, Equestrian Center is gonna get a new supervisor and that person is expected to start work on October 1st. Uh, the other item was uh, three of our GRF horses are now going to be retired. Uh, two have already found a spot at a place called Sunny Oasis, and uh, they soon will be uh, shifted over there. One is still going to be, they're still going to look for the, for the relocation of the third horse. Uh, one of the main other items in discussion was the, the horse manure that we collect, and uh, item in discussion is that uh, we've asked the landscape uh, director to see if we can implement that manure with our mulch to provide a better quality manure for our uh, landscape department. And he's working with the county uh, licensing so that we are approved to do that stuff. Uh, this will create a, a good amount of savings for the equestrian center uh, with the waste management uh, that we spend a substantial amount of money. Uh, the third, uh, that was, those were the first, the, the top three items in discussion this time. Anyway, the next meeting for the equestrian center is, uh, where is it? 
FAQ maintenance construction. I'm sorry, I cannot locate that item. Okay, I have show it September 23rd at 9 a.m. is a virtual meeting. September 22nd, that's what it says in mine. Oh, the 22nd? Yeah. Okay. At 9.30 a.m. Okay. Let's go Thank on to the GRF, GRF, Finance. Finance. Uh, GRF Finance Committee, uh, Director Mucci. Uh, most of the time for the GRF Finance Committee was spent in dealing with the issue of insurance. Uh, John Pearlstone, who's the uh, chair of that finance committee, has been working to look at alternative options related to insurance. Next meeting of the GRF Finance Committee is October 21st. Okay. Yeah, I made uh, a comment, please. Somebody have a comment? Oh, John Franco, go ahead. Yes. Uh, on the Community Activities Committee, I attended at Annie's place, and the controversial issue there was the proposal to move some of the equipment out of the gyms outside. And that is somewhat controversial and is going to be looked at by recreation and uh, see if there are other alternative solutions because the alternative really is to buy new equipment for the outside uh, activities. And uh, that's a condensive. Okay. All righty. On to uh, GRF Maintenance Construction Committee, Director Bada. The GRF Maintenance and Construction Committee uh, took place on October 12th, uh, and we uh, reported about that in our last uh, board meeting. Uh, there hasn't been another meeting since then, so our next meeting is October the 14th, 2020, at 9.30 a.m. It will okay. be a board meeting. previous meeting was in August? On August 12th. And okay. since then, we've had a board meeting, so we reported about that in the last board meeting. Okay. Uh, GRF Landscape Committee, Director Jarrett. Yes, uh, our last meeting was uh, August 12th. I reported that on that on the August board meeting. The next meeting will be held November the 11th at 1.30 p.m. Thank you. Okay. Uh, PAC Renovation Ad Hoc Committee and Clubhouse One Renovation Ad Hoc Committee, Director Mucci. Okay, thank you, President Parsons. As you all know by now, the previous $5.2 million proposal to renovate the Performing Arts Center was voted down by the corporate members of GRF. For those not aware, the corporate members consist of the board members of Third, United, and the Towers. The PAC renovation has since been reconstituted. However, it has not met formally. In the meantime, a number of, of the issues related to the PAC have been turned over to the MNC Committee of GRF. On August 18th, a tour of the PAC was conducted with three members of the GRF MNC Committee, as well as representatives of the Lighting Consultant of Record. The following items were considered by these committee members and the staff with the intention of taking them to the MNC Committee of, of GRF. One, main auditorium lighting. Replace existing lighting with LED bulbs where possible. A design for a new lighting control is also to be requested. In addition, a proposal for sidebar lighting is being considered. The sidebar lighting would be decorative in nature. Uh, stage lighting rigging replacement. The current rigging system, which consists of four sets of motors, winches, and cables, has been rendered inoperable for safety reasons. A proposal for replacement of the stage light rigging has been requested. In addition, a portable man lift is being considered, which would allow for the safe approach to rearranging the stage lights. The theater curtains. Originally, it was under consideration to replace all of the stage curtains. However, upon closer examination of the stage curtains, it appears that it may be possible to take them all down, have them fireproof, and so that they continue to be used. Four, the dining rooms. The two dining rooms are now proposed to be painted with ceiling tile and floor replacement. In addition, the lighting will be changed to LED bulbs. Five, the lobby. Originally, it was being considered to install new carpeting in the lobby. It has now been determined by the committee members who toured the facility that the carpet is actually in very good condition. It is recommended that the carpet be cleaned once all the other renovations are completed. In addition, the lobby needs to be painted and the lighting in the lobby converted to LED bulbs. Uh, ADA and fire safety components, it was determined that scope of work for fire alarm systems included in the previous architectural plans 
and specifications be pursued to determine if the PAC is currently out of compliance. In summary, here are the items specific for action regarding the PAC as prepared by staff based on the August 18th tour of the facility. One, solicit three electrical contractors to bid on bulb conversions for the entire facility. Two, request the lighting contractor of record be provi to provide a design proposal for a new light controller, side lights, and stage rigging. Three, research a man lift that meets the need of the facility. Four, solicit, solicit vendors for stage curtain repairs and fireproofing. Five, dining room upgrades. As I said, paint, new ceiling, tiles, and floor replacement plus include a room divider. Six, clean lobby carpet once rest of repairs are completed. Seven, provide fire alarm scope of work. Eight, provide ADA scope of work. This is all being considered by GRF MNC. Also, work on proposal to upgrade the HVAC system is under consideration. Staff is working with, GR, with GRF MNC uh, committee on all of these projects. At the moment, there is no scheduled meeting of the PAC renovation committee. Okay. Clubhouse One. A complete walkthrough of the Clubhouse One facility was undertaken by members of the committee with staff members on August 26th with a follow-up virtual meeting on September 2nd. Bert Muldow was chair of the committee and to date he has shared a number of position papers as well as proposed charter for the committee. Bert has been very open and receptive to input from all members of the committee. I can tell you that from all points of view, it appears that we do not have to make any quick decisions about Clubhouse One. It is not like we are in danger of any components collapsing. Now that there is a strategic planning committee for GRF, it would seem prudent to determine how Clubhouse One fits into the overall long-term long planning for GRF. Certainly part of the long-term planning will include how to pay for all the projects that are to be undertaken so that at least the strain that the least strain possible is placed on the finances of GRF. In addition, many of the committee members of Clubhouse One Renovation are interested in employing the services of a firm to do a programmatic assessment of Clubhouse One. This assessment would go beyond the current stakeholders in Clubhouse One to include an opportunity for many members of the village to express their comments and interests in how the Clubhouse can and should be designed for future use for the next 10, 20 years. For example, there has been interest over the years about having an indoor swimming pool. Is this something that should be considered for Clubhouse One, or is there stronger interest in some other type of approach for the renovation of Clubhouse One? These are the types of things that the results of a programmatic study would yield. However, please keep in mind, just because something like an indoor pool might be of interest, the questions of placement, cost, and need versus desire are just some of the considerations for any and all of the renovations of Clubhouse One. The next proposed meeting of Clubhouse One Renovation Committee is set for January. As I indicated previously, the committee is of the opinion that this is an important project that will take time and considerable thought to develop properly for the long haul. So please be patient as the process rolls out. One of the first steps is the programmatic study, which in and of itself will take some time. We want to give our best effort to making this project be one that everyone in the village can support. So, excuse me, so transparency of the process will be a key element. Thank you. Thank you very much for that update. On to media and communications, Director McCary. Thank you, uh, President Porson. The Media and Communications Committee did meet last month, August 17th. A report was given at our last month meeting on the, the communications committee. The next scheduled meeting is for September 20th, 2020 at 1.30 p.m. And that will be a virtual meeting. Thank you. Okay. Mobility and Vehicles Committee, Director Frankel. The um, Security and Communications, excuse me, the, the uh, Mobility and Vehicle Committee met on August 5th, and the next meeting will be October 7th. Uh, at the at the meeting, uh, Chris Loganair presented a uh, uh, a plan to optimize the bus schedule, and then we talked about a detailed vehicle listing uh, with all vehicles with their age and uh, vehicle replacement schedules, and uh, that's the extent of my uh, report. Okay. 
Uh, Security and Community Access Committee, Director Bada. President Parsons, I don't have anything to report for this uh, meeting. Um, okay. The next meeting is on October 26, 2020 at 1.30 p.m. Okay. okay. Disaster Preparedness Task Force, Director McCary. Uh, thank you, President Parsons. The task force met in July 20th, um, and a report was given at our last board meeting. The next task force meeting will be September 29th, 2020 at 9.30 a.m. That meeting will be virtual. Thank you. Okay. Uh, report of Laguna Woods Village Traffic Hearings, Director Frankel. The uh, traffic hearing will be held again tomorrow. We meet on a monthly basis. The, um, at the last meeting, there were 12 uh, violations that were addressed, and uh, eight of which were uh, parking. And uh, uh, I'm sorry, six were parking, two were vehicle registration, two were speeding, and two were vehicle storage. But of the 12 violations, eight were found guilty, three were guilty with no fine, and uh, one was a not guilty circumstance, which was a, a, an abandoned vehicle. And that's the extent of my uh, report. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, is there anything we've overlooked? Okay, on to future agenda items, item 15. Is there anything, uh, any changes we need to make on that? Okay, hearing none, we'll go into director's comments, uh, item 16. Uh, we'll start with uh, Kush. Do you have any comments? No comments today. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Robert. Thank you, President Parsons. Just one comment. I will be appearing on Channel 6 uh, later this week to specifically talk about the insurance issue where I'll be providing some very specific uh, explanations regarding dollar amounts for last year, this year, and proposed next year. Uh, so if people are interested, uh, please pay attention to that segment because there'll be very specific information for everybody. Thank you. Yeah, and I would uh, suggest that people record that one as well. Okay, uh, Annie, any last minute comments? Yes, thank you, President Porson. I have a couple of last minute comments. The first one is I want to thank the board for all the support and for the residents out there. I have been involved with what I consider the most important task that I've taken on since my time being on the board. And that has been working with our board, with the, the bylaws and the CCRs and our insurance. And we've worked tirelessly, giving up our Fridays, our Saturdays, and sometimes even Sundays to work so that we can bring this, this, these projects to some kind of closure. So I wanna thank the board for your support Thanks uh, to staff for all of their support, and I look forward to continuing to working with the staff so that we can finalize these problems, these issues. The other thing is um, time is changing quickly. We're not in, in uh, daylight savings time just as yet, but it's getting darker earlier. So just as a reminder for people that are out driving, to watch out for people that are walking, for people that are out walking, watch out for traffic, and let's continue to be safe. And those are my comments. Thank you, Director Parson. Okay, uh, Craig. No comment today, President Parsons. Okay, thanks. Ralph. I have no comments today, thank you. Okay, John Frankel. Uh, I have no comment, but uh, Steve, you want to discuss the uh, status of the election and the, and the five members that were uh, elected by acclamation? Uh, that'll be coming a little bit later. Thank you. Okay, Lynn? Yes, uh, President Parsons, I want to thank you to begin with for your chair remarks today. 
Uh, I hope people listened because you had a lot of very important things to say. And I really appreciate those. And the board appreciates you, believe me. Uh, I want to say something about Robert's work today. Robert blew me away today with all his wonderful graphs and slides and his presentation. And for somebody who was reluctant to take the treasure when we were hard up, <laughs> we came out on top. But I, Robert, I hope he sticks with it. So thank you. Okay. Uh, let's go to uh, Jeff Parker for staff. Any comments? I, I don't have any comments today. Thank you. Okay. Siobhan, please. President Parsons, you asked how a resident could dispose of a toilet if they changed out their plumbing. Um, the procedure is as follows. A resident would call resident services to start the process, and they will need to provide the exact day and location the toilet could be set out for bulk item pickup by waste management. The toilet must be free of water and must be wrapped in plastic. And that's our procedure for that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I skipped uh, Reza. Do you have any closing comments? Oh, thank you, President Parson. Uh, my comment is toward all of our members. I just want to make sure that we all understand that our community facing several major issues at this time. The CCNR is a major issue. I really uh, ask all of our members to participate and vote. We have a major issue with our insurance, and we welcome all the input and help and support that you can get from the community. And we are still in the you know, midst of this COVID issue. I understand I get a lot of comments from people that talk to me about, uh, you know, when we're going to open things up. All I can say, first, all of those areas belong to GRF, not Third Mutual, although we have a voice. But I'll ask everyone, please, to be patient. And let's do this safely for the sake of everybody. I understand the restriction and... Uh, Things not being available, people may, you know, getting a little edgy about it. But please, please, everyone's working hard. I, I just encourage GRF to work a little bit faster to, you know, to address this issue about reopening and, uh, of course, safely. Because people are getting concerned, and I appreciate that, but you know, at the same time, I ask our member, members to be patient with it, too. That's my comment for now. Okay, Kush, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I missed my chance, but <clears throat> I just want to add that uh, I would like uh, all our residents to be aware of the air quality and to be mindful about staying out and breathing the air uh, and to minimize being outside as much as possible. That's all I wanted to mention. Yeah, as a point on that, uh, my eyes have really been affected of uh, recent, uh, so I can understand exactly what you're saying. Um, Eileen, do you have any closing comments? For staff? I'm good, thank you very much. Okay, on to our VMS uh, representatives, Wei Ming. No comment, thank you. Okay, Rosemary. You're muted. I was so excited about making a comment that I didn't unmute myself. <laughs> uh, we had a great president and vice president meeting yesterday, <clears throat> and there are a number of things that we agreed that we would go over uh, on Wednesday. And one of them primarily is uh, problems that are being uh, that we have with the permit department, and also a need to have a meeting with the real estate agents and construction people. Um, so I think that those are very important. So we'll go over them tomorrow at either the open or closed VMS meeting because it's our responsibility on VMS to, to deliver the service that you, the boards, need for the community. Um, you're also, and Steve, this is going to be up to you, we're going to make a change in how we handle the investment committee. And um, I did want to make, mention two things. 
I got a I got a comment from the some of the people at the one ten and they commented on what a fabulous job that Kirk and our landscape, that's you, Lynn, department did and the people were very satisfied. So I thought that that was really good to um to hear positive comments about landscape because I lived for like nine years and I didn't hear them. So that's a really good thing. So you're doing a great job with that. And um, I wanted to, to uh, I had some repairs done in my unit. I mentioned it before, but I want to thank Ernesto for how hard he's working. But I don't know, it, it would be important, I think, for, for the community to understand what is actually happening in MNC? Like, are there work orders being done? You know, is resident, you know, all the resident services things being done? Because I think Jeff, you might give a little bit of an update on that. And my um, last comment is, where are you on the VMS contract? And that's it. Okay, uh, Raquel. My only comment is is that Brian has told me that. Spinning classes are going to be beginning Monday outside. So they are moving equipment outside. So the residents can enjoy something. So I guess we are starting to open up a little bit. And thank you, everyone. Okay. Uh, Jeff, going back to you, there were a couple of things that were mentioned. Uh, do you want to talk about anything or are we done for the day? Well, I can um, just uh, kind of reiterate what Raquel just said. One of the things that we were working at was to get outdoor classes, and um, one of them is a spin class, um, cycling uh, spin class. We are also looking at whether or not there's any other equipment that could move out, but the, we're focusing on classes that can, like yoga, yoga with chairs, um, hula hoop, uh, we have a hula cl class. Um, those kind of exercise classes that can be held outside, we're, we're certainly gearing up to get those going next week, along with the expansion, as uh, Siobhan mentioned, with regards to the uh, added hours with regards to our um, tennis courts and, and, and pickleball courts and, and also the lawn bowling. So again, we're trying to push um, more and more activities outside. You, you know, address obviously we understand the air quality and we want to be careful about that, but um, we want to give people more and more opportunities to get out and get exercise. Okay, thank you. Uh, just to go back to one of Rosemary's comment on the VMS contract, uh, I personally am waiting on uh, GRF for their comments and we can move forward. I heard that uh, United is going to go ahead and submit theirs, uh, I believe, this week. So uh, stand by for more information on that. Well, we thank everybody for tuning in today. And uh, like I said, uh, please, when you uh, hear of new things that are going to come out, dealing with the issues we need you to vote on come or by November 2nd, please tape those so you can go back and look at them. And it'll give you detailed information on what's coming. You'll see other things through TV, through the crawlers on there, through the, uh, the Globe and other media. So please stay tuned because it does affect every owner in Third Mutual. And we do request your help in moving this pro, uh, program forward. Once again, thanks for everything that uh, everybody's doing. Uh, everybody's been working so hard. Thank you for that. And at this time, we'll go ahead and uh, be in recess until uh, one, or excuse me, 11.15, then we'll start our closed session and uh, Director McCary will be the chair of that session. So thank you so much folks and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.